Hey guys, it's Sam in the Rain. Today, I'm going to start a new series, which I hope will continue for a long time, um, based off the popular Will It Blend series, but we're not going to blend with the Blender, we're going to blend with the 3D animation software Blender. But that didn't sound right, did it? Never mind. So, today what we'll be making is the Samsung Galaxy S phone. Now, I recently got one of these, and it happened to be the first thing lying next to my computer the day I wanted to start this program, and so I modeled it. And today I'll go through the process of teaching you guys how to model one of these for yourself. So let's get started. The first thing that you'll need is a reference image, or not really a reference image, but this. This is a screenshot of the Galaxy S, or similar to the one that I have. Just Google search Galaxy S screenshot for if you want something like that. For reference image, um, I didn't need one because I have one. It's in my hand right now. But if you want to use the final render image like this as a reference image, then that might work well. I don't know what you want to do. So this is our finished blend file. It's a bit laggy because I have two copies of this phone. One's in another layer. And it has all the logos and stuff. And it's pretty pretty simple to build actually, it just takes a while. So save this and start a new one. Alright, so we're gonna keep this default cube. Five for orthographic mode, seven for top view. We'll scale this up a little bit. Like this. So it looks about the right size that a phone would have from the top. Uh, maybe a little bit wider. Yeah, that's about good. Maybe a little bit more here. Alright. Now what we're going to do is we're going to scale it down on the z-axis quite a bit. So it's more like that. That will be the basis of our phone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the modifiers panel. We add a modifier. Subdivision surface, or subsurf, as most people call it. Now you'll see that it doesn't look like a phone doll. It's been shrunk into an oval thing, kind of. So make sure that this setting here is 2. Hit tab for edit mode, and can use control R to add a loop cut, and move your mouse over this edge right here, so the purple line appears around the bounding box. Now we can drag it up, and as you can see, the points at which the subsurf modifier is calculated changes with added vertices, and so it makes this top part, part flatter which is what you want on the phone. If we look at the phone itself, the lower part is a little bit less, is a little bit um, more curvy than the top, so we'll add another loop cut with Control R, but we won't, make the, we won't make this one as high as that one. So, let's see. Yeah, that's better. Now, we're going to hit Control R again, and this time, move your cursor so it's like this, and scroll up your mouse wheel. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, about six, so it's like this, and it looks more and more like a phone now, and I think that's what we want. So, let's see, hmm, still on the z-axis a little bit, it's a little bit too big, um, holding up my phone to the computer right now, actually let's add another loop cut right here, Move it up like that. Another one down here. Move it down like that. Maybe that was a bit too much. Yeah, I think that's good. So this will be the basis of our phone. Now you can go ahead and click apply on here. If I can ever reach it with my mouse. Um, I'll just change this light by clicking it and turning it to a hemi camera view and zooming out. So let's get a test render real quick. That's what we have so far. Now, we're going to select this, and we're going to take the part which the, um, what am I trying to say? I'm going to take the screen and bring it so that the outside of the phone frame, like these, like this side right here, is higher in elevation than this part. It'll make more sense when I apply it. So, we will use the box select tool select, actually change it to face select mode, select bow, 
this vertex. That's me leaning back in my chair. Um, down to about here. Nice. We can use C and right click, not right click, left click. I like it better than individually clicking each vertex. And now what we can do is we hit E and then it'll automatically do it on the Z axis. Before we do that, we'll hit one for front view. E and drag it down just a little bit. So you can see that this part like this screen part is lower than the actual frame on the outside of the phone. Alright, um, next step. We're going to do the power button, which is located on this side of the phone. So we'll hit right 3 for right ortho. And it's about um, maybe about a fourth of the way down, a little bit more than a fourth of the way down. So, fourth, fourth. Let's put it about here. Grab a couple of these vertices that will work. Maybe these up here. Extrude it like that with E. And that's that's okay. Maybe we'll extrude these ones too. I hit the snap tool and snap to vertex. So when we extrude this, it'll be the same thickness like that. All right, that's our power button. As you can see. It's not really hard to do at all. It just requires a couple of um, careful, like careful planning, and a bit of, yeah, planning. Next, we'll be doing the USB charger slot, which is located a little bit to the right, I mean, a little bit to the right of the center of the phone. So we'll add another loop cut like that. Take these vertices, with B for select, about this much. Not these ones. Hit E. Okay, there a little bit. Yeah, that's what we want. On that same part, we'll. Wait, wait, okay. That same part, we'll be adding the phone not phone jack, the um, headphones jack, which won't look exactly like it does in real life because I'm not sure how to actually obtain that. So will you see and select these vertices about there? Not that one. We'll hit extrude. Actually, we'll hit E, escape, G, Y, and move that. Never mind. Um, what am I doing? Oh, E, escape, then hit size, I think, S for scale. Yeah, that's about what we want. Now, scale it. Scale on the Y axis like that. Grab it out a little bit. Mm, not exactly what we want. I'm not sure how we're going to do that. I forgot exactly what I did. Hmm. We'll skip that for now. And the last thing I can think of is this part down here. There's a little slot which will use these vertices right here. Like that. Oh, I can never select them. And extrude and just bring it inside a little bit. Hmm. I think that's okay. Yeah. Alright, so that's pretty much the body of our phone. It might not be exact, but scale it like that a little bit. And is there anything I'm forgetting? Oh yes, I forgot the volume button. This one's about the same area as the power button. And the power button's over here. So we would start about there. And this one's a lot bigger than the power button. So we'll take about these vertices. Extrude a little bit. Now, this one is a little bit more curved, so what we're going to do is going to take these vertices, that, that, this, and this, and it's not that one, I selected the wrong one. There, scale Z, which will bring them closer together like that. You can do the same for all of these, bring them closer together like so. Alright, yep, that looks good. We could add a plus and minus on there if you want, but I don't think we need to. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and save this in my folder that I usually use. Um, recording Galaxy S3 recording. 
it's always a good idea to save frequently. So we have the basic body of our phone. Now we're going to start applying some textures. Yeah, that's what we want. So we hit Z to go into I mean, tab in Z, wait no, just tab for edit mode. Now hit face select. We're gonna select the area in which the L C D screen will be located. So we'll take about this much of the phone. Maybe a little bit up here. Yeah, that looks all right, right? Going to add a material, or plus material, plus here, add new, change this one to LCD screen, not really necessary, hit assign, and what that does is in edit mode, it will assign this specific material to the vertices I have selected right now. Material, we'll change this to phone body, or more like bottom. And if you look at the back of the Galaxy S phone, it's gray, but if you look, like at least in my opinion, it has a tiny bit of gray shading. I mean, not gray, green. So if you drag that down like that, go back to this window, hit Control i to select everything besides the stuff we had previously selected. You can hit Assign, and that way we can tell the difference between this LCD screen and the bottom of the phone. We'll apply more textures to this later, but for now we're going to keep it just like that. We might want to hit smooth shading. Yes. Oh, and one more thing. If you hit smooth shading and you get a couple of these problems like that, what you want to do is you want to go to the modifiers panel, check that, and add edge split. That'll still keep the smooth shading, but it'll make it so that um, most of your smooth shading problems are eliminated. And back to the materials. Now we're going to fix LCD screen. And so, have this selected in the textures panel. You, don't, you can be in either object mode or edit mode, it doesn't matter. Hit texture, right after selecting this. Um, I don't know why I have that there. Hit plus new, image or movie, and navigate to the place where you saved yours. Mine's right here. Save your screenshot, it looks like that. Now, um, change coordinates to UV, because we're going to UV map that um, texture to the plane. Or not really the plane, but the screen. So, I dragged out a new window from there, I go like that. And I'll change this to Galaxy S Screenshot. Hit tab in this window. If, it, if, if yours is still selected like that, you say A, then go to the materials panel, hit this, then select, which will select all the vertices assigned to that texture. Oh, my phone just buzzed. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. <clears throat> That's one of the disadvantages of having your phone out during recording. A quick drink of water. Right, so we have these vertices selected, hit U for unwrap, unwrap them, and it'll show up like this. Now, in this panel, which we'll enlarge by hitting Control up arrow to see the whole thing, what we'll do is we'll stretch these vertices to fill this whole image, like so. Hmm. I stop saying like so. If any of you watch Static 777, he um, was doing Redstone Wars against Generic B a while ago, and he kept saying like like um he kept saying like so, and it kind of bothered me a little bit. But that's beside the point. So I've shrunk it by hitting Control Upper Row again. Then I selected this. We're going to hit F12 to render. Oh, and it looks pretty good. Hmm. The first time I tried that, I had a big problem with the orientation, but. I guess this time it works pretty well. Alright, so, that's the screen done. And that was my mom sneezing. We'll come back to that texture later, because there's a couple other things we need to add. Now, we're going to add the black textures that are around here on the phone, and down here. So, we'll add a new material. Call it, um, LCD Adjacent. Turn that all the way down to black. 
I'm not, these textures really aren't accurate. I'm just doing them for the sake of this tutorial. Now select about, with box select these, excuse me, and I keep on hitting the wrong button. These, um, I think that's about right. Actually, no, no, we don't want those. We want to keep these ones, the layered the, um, vertices that have been, that are on top from when we extruded this whole panel down. We don't want any of those selected. So we'll hit LCD adjacent, hit assign, do the same thing down here, about, hmm, like that, yeah. Take this. We can just box select the rest, deselect those on the LCD screen, hit assign, and we have that part of the screen. 